three, two. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. I almost didn't get that out. Top 5 Friday. And this week we are doing, once again, we are doing a Stephen King list. I will try and do a non-Stephen King list next week, but I want to go ahead and get this one out as a companion to last week's my top five favorite Stephen King characters. This one is my top five least favorite King characters, which was um, everybody thought was a great idea. So here we go. Jumping right into it. We have, and you're going to find uh, at least two good books on this list. Uh, that doesn't mean that... Uh, it, it doesn't mean, just because books are on this list does not mean that the book is bad. It just means that there are characters in there that I didn't care too much about. So right off the, right off the bat, one of my least favorite Stephen King books, and mainly because of the characters, is Eyes of the Dragon. Um, Prince Peter, King Rowan, um, and all of them, pretty much everybody in the book is pretty super sorry. Um, but, uh, but Prince Peter is the worst. Uh, he's a basic avatar uh, that was just kind of slapped in there. One of my, my one of my biggest problems with this book is how unlike Stephen King it is. Um, the language is really dumbed down. The uh, the content is really really watered down. Uh, there's not too much good about this. And I know there's a lot of you out there. <laughs> I hear the thumbs down already. I know there's a lot of you out there that have fond memories of this book. Maybe it's your first Stephen King book, the first book that you were able to read from him, that your parents would let you read. Whatever. I understand that. Me, myself, and I do not care for this book. And the main reason for it is either the reusing of ideas or the <laughs> the crappy characters. The characters are boring. I didn't like anything about him, and the main character is the worst part of the book, easily. Next up, we have, and this is in no particular order whatsoever, next up we have a really, really good book, one of King's best, Lisey Story. Now, the problem with this is the two bad guys. Um, I've read this book two or three times, I can't really remember, I'd have to check again, but um, I can never remember the names of, there's one bad guy and then another guy that he hired to do it. Can't remember their names and they're pretty much the most, the, the easiest to write off in all of King's works. They're just not memorable villains. Um, luckily for us, this book does not depend on a villain-hero relationship. It all depends on the relationship between um, Lisey and her, her husband Scott and their relationship and really the bad guys are kind of second fiddle to everything else so they didn't have to be great um, but every single Stephen King novel has a, a characters like those two guys usually they're in one um, but in this one it just so happens that there's two two of them and neither one of them really stood out for me um, completely forgettable and you're gonna you're pro you're gonna catch that uh, in my the, this list that it pretty much you know this list is about characters that are either forgettable or that are have been reused over King's uh, history bibliography whatever you want to call it next up we have another good book Mr. Mercedes I don't like Bill Hodges um, <laughs> so spoiler for the Mr. Mercedes series as a whole um, I did cry at the end of uh, End of Watch. That was a very poignant piece of literature, I felt. Um, I also felt that it was kind of like a goodbye from Stephen King. I thought that was the end of it, um, that he was saying, okay, let me write, let me go into this and write this, this story I've been wanting to write, this crime thriller, this series of crime thrillers, and that'll be it, that'll be a goodbye. And then it, he called it End of Watch, and there was a bunch of theme about the end of life and all that stuff and I became a little worried um, so I was emotionally involved in the last book but Bill Hodges is not a character I cared anything about up until that final book um, in fact in Finders Keepers I was actually upset when he finally shows up because in, the, in that book it takes him 150 pages before Bill Hodges even comes on screen I think he's a toss away character, he's a throwaway character, a character I didn't care anything about um, now, King has written 
older men much, much better than this. Ralph Roberts is a perfect example from Insomnia. Um, I don't know what went wrong here. Uh, of course, this series is also uh, not to blame, but to thank for one of one of my favorite. She didn't make the top five, but Holly Gibney is a terrific character. In fact, I would have loved to have seen her in place of Bill for the entire series. Anyhow, so next up, I'm I'm debating which one to talk about first. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the newest one first. Um, <laughs> Now this one, this one's going to be hard because I hate the entire cast. The entire cast are reused characters from other Stephen King books. He pulled, he definitely pulled a Dean Koontz um, by pretty much just reusing the entire cast from Under the Dome. And we have from Sleeping Beauties, the uh, I guess the main dude. I um, can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, yeah, the main dude. Whatever his name was. I can't be bothered to remember. Uh, Eve Black is kind of hot garbage too. I mean, she's a miss, she's a mismatch of uh, mishmash, whatever you want to call it, uh, of Andre Linoge and Randall Flag, and kind of like a gender swapped, you know, Randall Flag or Andre Linoge from Storm of the Century. It's just everybody in here pretty much stunk. But I think the main character, the main character was so forgettable. I can't even remember. Did he work for the prison? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, he was just kind of there. I mean, I, I, I kind of want to go back and reread it just so I can figure out who these characters were because I don't remember any of them. Uh, all the, all the, uh, the women in the prison kind of bled together, um, and that's really bad. I don't. There was nobody that really stood out at all from this book other than the bad guy, and the only reason she stood out is because you can't really forget her. I mean, she's the one who started the whole thing, so, but she was definitely, so I'm going to take that back, not the main guy, I'd say Eve Black, uh, Evie, whatever the hell her name is, uh, yeah, Eve Black, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, she, she's on this list, but it's pretty much the entire cast, the entire cast, it is hot out here, y'all, I apologize, alright, last, and certainly least, no, I'm just kidding, um, last is, now, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna throw out some honorable mentions here. Actually, it's only one honorable mention, and that's Rhea, the witch from Wizard and Glass. I hated how hokey she was. I, I couldn't stand her. And, let's go ahead while we're at it, what's his name, Clay from Cell? Didn't like him either. Um, but I did like the Raggedy Man, so there was a decent part about Cell, um, and that was pretty much it. So, last on the list is Landon's... Landon's gonna love this one. Dreamcatcher. And we are talking about the... This is another one. Jonesy and Henry, I think it is. I can't remember the two guys' names. Um, the only... I liked Beeve, and I liked uh, the guy that Timothy Oliphant played. Uh, so, Jonesy and Henry, I think those two guys, they just... They... They became one person at, at one point in time, and I like Beeve, and I like the other guy, um, I can't remember his name, um, but Jonesy and Henry were just, they're the same person, um, with slightly different storylines. One, oh, there's one gets hit by a car, but there was nothing about them that, but, and, and they were supposed to carry the entire novel. I think Henry and Jonesy were supposed to carry the entire thing because, spoiler alert, Beeb dies, and so does what's his nuts. Um, and these other two guys are supposed to carry it, and it's like I don't care because in the movie it's uh, Thomas Jane and the British dude from Homeland, or I think it's Homeland. Um, but they it didn't do anything for me. And when I when I got to thinking about this list once again, I went and I looked at the books, and I'm like, okay, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I easily had my top five. Um, but going back, I think the entirety of Sleeping Beauties, and it's funny because I've been talking to some people about Sleeping Beauties and just like, kind of like an overall statement. If you liked Under the Dome, you didn't like Sleeping Beauties. If you, well, the only way you liked Sleeping Beauties is if you hadn't read Under the Dome or you didn't like Under the Dome, um, which I thought was funny. But going back to that, I mean, the entire, I can't, I'm still sitting here. So I think the worst of the worst is Sleeping Beauties for me as far as the characters are concerned. Because he really did pull a Dean Koontz. He just reused, he reused storyline, he reused characters, all that stuff. 
So, what are some of your choices? I'd love to see your top 5, 10, 20, whatever, down there in the comments below. Um, let me know who your absolute worst you can't stand reading about. So until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.